let this be a normal project. With a Griffin. No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Hey guys, Griffin here. Today we're going to be talking about a man that was heavily involved with both World War I and World War II. We are talking about America's 34th president, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Dwight D. Eisenhower was born on October 14, 1890 in Denison, Texas. His parents were Jacob Eisenhower and Ida Elizabeth Eisenhower. In his early years, he lived in a small house near some railroad tracks where his father made a living by cleaning train engines. Wow, Dwight. I'm Jacob Eisenhower. I clean a lot of engines. When Dwight was only one and a half years old, his family moved to Abilene, Kansas. Dwight went to Abilene High School where he graduated in 1909. In 1911, Dwight went to the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York. He was a star on the football field, but was eventually forced to retire due to a series of knee injuries. Dwight graduated in 1915 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant. After graduating, Dwight was stationed in Texas, where he met his future wife, Mamie. He proposed on Valentine's Day of 1916 and married her later that year on July 1st, 1916. Mamie, how's your day going so far? It's been wonderful. How's yours? It's been absolutely lovely. Mamie, will you marry me? Yes! <laughs> In the beginning of Dwight's military career, he and Mamie moved from one post to another quite often. The couple found themselves living in Texas, Georgia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and even New Jersey. On September 24th, 1917, the couple's first son, Dow, was born. That same year, the U.S. entered World War I. Although Dwight requested an overseas assignment, he was appointed to training tank crews at Camp Cole in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In 1921, Dwight's first son, Dowd, died to twilight fever at the age of three. A year later, Mamie gave birth to the couple's second son, John Sheldon Dowd. In 1924, Dwight went to the Command and General Staff School in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. He graduated only two years later. In 1927, Dwight started touring the War Department. He became Douglas MacArthur's chief military aide in 1929. Dwight served as his assistant military advisor in the Philippines. He moved back to the States in 1940. Dwight was stationed in California and Washington for the next two years. He was promoted to Brigadier General in 1941 and further promoted to Major General in 1942. In 1942, he also became the Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Forces. Eisenhower ended up commanding the Allied forces in the invasion of Normandy on D-Day. Oh. 
Germany surrendered in 1945, and Eisenhower was appointed as the first Supreme Allied Commander of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in 1951. Hey guys, it's David. In 1952, Eisenhower returned to Albany and announced his candidacy with the Republican Party. On November 4th, 1952, he became the United States 34th President. He ended up having to service for two terms, and one of his biggest concerns was promoting peaceful use for nuclear energy. He expressed this in his Alice for Peace speech at the United States General Assembly in 1953. We must repurpose nuclear technology for peaceful means. The way by which the miraculous inventiveness of man shall not be dedicated to death, but be consecrated to life. Yes, Mr. Eisenhower. Eisenhower left office in January of 1961. He retired to a farmhouse in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He died on March 28, 1969. Both the state and military funeral held in his honor. You may be wondering, why should we care about the life of Dwight D. Eisenhower? Well, his many accomplishments include creating the United States Information Agency, establishing Alaska and Hawaii as states, signing the 1957 and 1960 Civil Rights Acts, setting up a permanent Civil Rights Commission, assisting in the creation of the Air State Highway System, and signing the bill to form NASA. You should have aimed for the head. Mr. Eisenhower, I don't feel so good.